Hi there and welcome to another video on Python. In this video we're going to take a look at the ittertools.chain function which is part of the ittertools module in the Python standard library. Now what the chain function does is it takes as arguments as you can see here um, it takes lists or sets or tuples any kind of sequence in Python including strings actually and it chains together the elements from the first one to the second one and so on, you can actually pass as many iterables as you like and it returns to you and a single list or a single sequence containing all the elements from each of the iterables. And that one of the important points is that chain does not make copies of the provided iterables. It doesn't copy these. This is not a, a copied version. It, it actually contains pointers to each of the individual iterables that are passed to the function. So that can be very memory efficient if you're dealing with large data sets and you've got huge lists or huge sets of data and you want to chain them together without creating copies which would uh, have a bit of a memory cost associated with it. So ittertools.chain gives you a handy way to treat multiple sequences as a single as a single sequence essentially which you can then loop over and do whatever you want to. So what I'm going to start by doing is importing the ittertools module and as I said that's part of the standard library so we can just import that like that and what we're going to do is define a couple of lists of data I'm actually just going to copy this, I've, I've got a little, a little reference to that here we've got two lists containing five integers each so A and B, um, A contains smaller numbers, B contains larger numbers and what I'm going to show you is that you can simply if you wanted to join together A and B into a single iterable, we can do ittertools.chain of A and B. Now that returns a chain object, but we can convert that to a list. This will make a copy, by the way, um, if you want to do that. But you can see that when we convert that to a list, you end up getting all of the elements from A, and that's um, up to 5, and then all of the elements from B, from 5 to 11. So that creates a new list containing those elements. Now, I said earlier that ittertools.chain does not make a copy. If you convert it to a list like that, it does make a copy. But what we can do is we can actually iterate over the elements in the chain. So what I can see is for a number in ittertools.chain and we're passing the two lists that we created up here, A and B. For each number in that list, let's print out the number. And that will that is able to do that without making a copy of A and B, so that's more memory efficient. So just to demonstrate that this also works with tuples and it works with strings, it doesn't matter what the type of data is, it can be an integer, it can be anything. I'm going to create two new lists here, I'm going to say C and D and I'm going to copy these again. And if I just copy these here, so we can see that C is a tuple containing X, Y and Z and D is actually a set containing X, X, Y, Y, and Z, Z. So if I create a chained object, and um, it's going to be ittertools.chain, C, and D, I can then list that out uh, as so. And you see that you get the elements from, uh, uh, from C, which is the tuple, and you also get the elements from D, which is the set. And we can actually add on to the list, one of the lists that we defined up here. Let's say we'll add on A. This is just showing that ittertools.chain actually takes variable numbers of arguments. You can pass as many sequences as you want to it and it will return a chained version of that which you can then iterate over if you want without creating a copy or you can convert the chained structure to its own list, whatever you want to do. So you see that when we chain A to the existing, uh, the existing chain we actually get the values from A added to the end of that. So that's a demonstration of using a tuple, a set and a list in order to create this chained structure. We can also use other tools in more, slightly more real world examples. This one is a bit contrived as well, but I'm going to show you how to do this. So I'm going to import the string library, which is part of Python's standard library. And let's grab the ASCII characters and you can get them with the string dot ASCII letters property and we can convert that to a list so just show you quickly what that is if you look at the ASCII you get um, each individual character each each letter in from A to Z lowercase and uppercase to convert that to a list we can 
yeah, just use the list constructor there. Um, and I've not spelled that correctly, sorry. And that will actually give us it back as a list. And each element within the list is a single letter. So what I'm going to do now is, and I've grabbed this online, these are the letters that are specific to the Lithuanian alphabet. Um, so we can grab them here like that. And if I print those out, you can see that they print out like that. And I can also, I'll, these are the lowercase versions. I want to extend that to the uppercase version. So I'm going to extend the list that we've got using the list.extend function. And I'm going to add to that list the uppercase version of each letter in that original list. So we have a list of lowercase Lithuanian characters to which I want to add another list containing the uppercase version of each one of them. And I'm using a list comprehension here to generate a new list containing the uppercase characters, which is then extended onto the original list. So if I print out the new version of LT letters after being extended, you see that we get the same original elements, but we also have the appended uppercase elements as well. So that's how you do that. So now that I've got that, I want to chain together the ASCII letters with the Lithuanian letters. So how do I do that? So what I can do is I can say for each character in the iterTools.chain of the ASCII list and the Lithuanian letters. For each one of those, I can print the character, let's say. And what that does is underneath the two lists we had before, we get all the English letters, the, the ASCII letters, but to the end of that we have chained on the Lithuanian characters. So that's another example of how to use itertools.chain in order to do something of practical value. As a final example, I'm going to show how to do some statistics with the chained lists. So if I import the random module and import statistics, what I'm going to do is create two um, arrays two lists of ratings. Let's just say these are coming from a website and you can rate um, an item between 0 and 5 and you can rate them any number you want including uh, decimal numbers. So random.uniform from the random module and I want to generate random, uniformly generate random numbers between 0 and 5 and I want to do 20 of those so for range, for range of 20 give me ratings. So that will give me 20 random ratings and you can see that if you actually rated an item like that, that is a very specific rating so someone clearly knows exactly what they want. Um, and I can do the same for ratings too, I'm going to create a, uh, another one of these and that will give me two ratings objects, um, ratings lists rather. And what I want to do is chain together these ratings and get some statistics on them. So I can print the mean by using the statistics module which has a mean method and to that I can pass itertools.chain and I can pass to that the two lists. So the mean of the randomly generated numbers turns out to be 2.727 um, and similarly I'm going to copy this and we'll print it three times because I'm going to do the standard deviation and that's the statistics.pstdev dev sorry statistics.pstdev and um, again we're passing the chain version of these two lists and that will generate the standard deviation and finally I want to get the median which is the statistics.median function. So if I print all of these out we get the summary statistics and you can see that the mean is fairly close to the midpoint of, uh, of that random uniform. So between 0 and 5, the midpoint should be roughly 2.5. We've only got 20 examples, so we do deviate slightly from that. But um, if I was to increase the number of values here, you would expect the mean to tend towards 2.5. You can see it does get closer to that because there's more samples and that smooths out some of the, uh, the data a little bit, gets it closer to the mean. So that's an example of how to use the statistics module with the itertools.chain function and as a very final example I'm going to square each value in the ratings list. So we've got two ratings lists and let's say for x in itertools.chain ratings 1, ratings 2. So we're chaining, again we're chaining together the two ratings 
lists and what I want to do is for each um, number in that list that we get, the chained list back, I want to actually square that, so x x is what we've got from the for loop variable, so x squared and that will give me the squared values and if I print those out you see that we get square numbers um, most numbers have increased in value because they're above 1 there are some numbers when you generate random uniform data between 0 and 5 you do get some numbers below 1 which when you square them reduces them towards 0 so that's why we get some values below 0 there and that's all for this video um, I hope you've learned something and if you enjoyed it please like and subscribe thanks for watching